Welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to this webinar offered by the European School Education Platform, the European Commission's platform for school education in Europe. My name is Marta and I will be your host for today. Just a practical information before we officially start, the webinar is recorded and the recording might be used for dissemination purposes. And if you have questions, comments, please post them in the chat. Please keep in mind that we will address general questions, but specific questions related to individual user, um, user issues will be addressed elsewhere. So the new European School Education Platform is available thanks to the financial support of the uh, Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. The new platform will become a hub for content, networking and professional development of school education community hosting all the content and services provided so far by School Education Gateway and the Twinning platforms. During this webinar, the speakers will explain the objective for the new platform and introduce you to different areas and functionalities currently available, as well as an offer of an overview of the further developments of the platform, content and services over the coming months. It's my pleasure to introduce our speakers. We have Marcus Rester, Head of Sector, Online Education Platform with School and Multilingualism Unit in the Directorate General Education, Youth, Sport and Culture of the European Commission. We have also Jessica Massini, Interaction, Interaction Designer at European Schoolnet, and Benjamin Ertz, Pedagogical Manager at European Schoolnet, who will be standing for our colleague Ruth Battista as she cannot be with us today. Without further ado, I would like now to give the floor to Marcus. Marcus, please, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Um, this is what I would like to, to start the, the webinar with. The what, the why and the how are the main areas I want to address. So I want to start with giving you a bit of overview of the next few minutes. First, let's talk about of the great, let's talk about the great heritage that we have, the Twinning and School Education Gateway. Let's look at them. What are they offering? What are the audiences? What is the vision of this single integrated European School Education Platform? Then I would like to, to close with a few examples of um, how do we achieve this harmonization that we are aiming for? How do we achieve this reuse of existing solutions that we are aiming for? But basically, that's that what that's what you can expect in the next few minutes. Next one, please. So, it's winning. You, many of you are, are very much aware. It's a, a success story since 17 years. It's a restricted platform for teachers and school staff, and everyone being active there needs to be vetted by an intervening national support organization, which provides this safe and secure place. It's a community, a lot of peer learning happens there, professional development courses are offered and much more. But at the core of the twinning, of course, is the cross-border, are the cross-border projects with your, with the students, uh, between teachers, school staff and their students. On the other hand, the, twin, uh, the school education gateway is an open platform. Anyone can register. It has information not only for school staff, but for policymakers, researchers, etc. Great offers of uh, professional development uh, courses on the so-called Teacher Academy there. The course catalog for third party providers uh, um, giving courses, offering courses that can be uh, attended via Erasmus Plus funding. Partner finding for Erasmus Plus, of course. Uh, European toolkit for schools and much, much more. Next one. So this is, an, this is a very nice overview that you can find on both platforms um, that gives you like, what is the school education gateway offering? What is it winning offering? And if we look at the lists, uh, at the, the, the points uh, in the list, what they offer, you might spot some overlaps. Uh, can you give me the next one, please? For instance, partner finding, partner search. On the SAG, on the School Education Gateway, you have that for uh, Erasmus Plus projects. 
Uh, and in the twinning, you have the same thing, of course, for, for a twinning. The same holds true for uh, professional development. You have the, the great uh, teacher academy webinars and online courses. And on the twinning, you have the online courses, the learning events, the professional development workshops. So both areas are covered in both places. And if you are a teacher, how do you know where to go? Basically, you have to monitor both both platforms to to identify interesting uh, professional development offers. Next one. And that's the reason why we decided, OK, how, how about we merge that, make, make them make all of this happen in one single place? You think about professional development, there's one place to go, the professional development section in the school education gateway, uh, in the school, European school education platform. That's a, you see, it's a, a lot of legacy involved and a strong heritage um, that I also need to adapt. Um, or you think about, I want to find a partner, be it for any tuning project, be it for an Erasmus project, there's one place you go, it's the partner finding functionality on the new uh, European School Education Platform. Next one, please. So, mentioned already, you find resources here and there. You find professional development here and there. You find partner search here and there. Next one. And we want to bring that to one single platform. Um, we want to streamline the user journeys. You as a user, you go there. You do not need first to decide to which platform do I go, where do I find the partner search in the one platform as opposed to the other platform that is might seem slightly different maybe. We want to deduplicate content and functionalities, harmonize visual identity, reuse solutions that already exist on many other platforms the European Commission uh, runs, and so create a, a more efficient uh spending of money also of taxpayers money next one look that's that's how how harmonization now, now looks like on the left hand side you have the european platform for adult educate adult education professionals epale and on the right hand side you have the new european school education platform and you see already with that it looks the same it's hosted on the same uh europa eu uh, domain it's uh not only the visual identity, but also the underlying technology is the same. So if we spend, again, taxpayers' money in developing a very new full functionality on Nepal, since it's the same technology, it should be easily uh, be po uh, ported to the uh, to the uh, school education platform and vice versa. So creating a lot of synergies. And another example would be on the next slide one too much yes that's the one um, when i talk about reuse of corporate solutions one nice example is the use of eu login with one and the same login i can access a pale for adult educators as the school education platform i can go with the same login to eu academy where ben will talk later about where all the professional development is hosted and now not only for the school education sector but also for a pale and for the european solidarity core and for humanitarian humanitarian aid and all courses by many other directorate generals of the European Commission and other European institutions. So the one single place when you go, when you want to take a course or want to, to, to join a webinar. Um, with the same single sign on uh, uh, EU login account, I can go to the European Youth Portal, I can go to Europass and update my CV there. And this is just one of the many examples where we create synergies and reuse things from, from existing solutions. Um, before I now hand over to, to Jessica, you can imagine having a, a heritage of 17 years on its winning and uh, uh, a bit less like uh, on for, for the school education gateway. Um, bringing those two platforms first, bringing them together, moving them from, from one technology that is phased out in the Commission uh, universe to another technology. Uh, this is a huge undertaking. This is we are working now since a long time together with uh, with uh, the central support service and uh, the contractor for the IT development um, to get this done. And in such big project, are there hiccups? Yes, of course there are. Uh, is it a bumpy road? Yes, it's a very bumpy road. And 
we do our best. We do really do our best. I see already um, that some of you posted questions. When will it be fully functional? When when will this work? When will that work? Rest assured, we work hard together with all involved uh, colleagues in the executive agency and on the central support service side. Um, and we plan a new deployment next week that will again solve a lot of these hiccups experienced. But as with any project of that magnitude, it was it was to be expected. Um, we will get there. Um, and it's really nice to see uh, the school education platform coming to life, seeing seeing you creating projects there, seeing new users registering, seeing users from the old eTwinning platform activating their accounts there. So this is really exciting and uh, it's coming to life. And content migration from the SEC is, is working progress. It's running as we speak. So all the content from the old school education gateway will be migrated and will be soon available on the new platform. And as long as this is not fully there, the old platform is still available to access all content. So now I close here on my side and hand over to Jessica. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcus, for, for giving uh, this introduction and also for addressing uh, some of the questions that were posted by the user in the chat. Uh, I remind you that for general questions, we will also come back to you towards the end of the webinar during the Q&A session. So please keep on posting them in the chat. Uh, now, without further delay, I will give the floor to Jessica Massini, our interaction designer. Jessica, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marta. And thank you, Marta, and hello, everyone. So I'm going to quickly guide you through the world platform and what is there for you and what you can do on the platform at the moment. And then I will finish telling you what is coming next. So uh, we're going through the home page, the mailbox. I will show you how the eTwinning area works, uh, how to find contact schools, organization, uh, how to navigate the twin space, what you can do there, what is the difference between a twin space and a group, and then, of course, as I said before, uh, what is coming next. So uh, first of all, uh, this is the home page. Uh, we are still working on it, as you uh, as you can imagine, it will be improved. Uh, you will have also the news very soon on the on the home page, uh, and this is how it looks like for non-logged in users. In case you log in with your EU login, then you will be also able to see the upcoming courses that is going to happen on the EU Academy, and then uh, my my colleague Ben uh, will uh, will introduce you later. And also, uh, this is the main differences between, because in the platform you can register as a, a, a European School Education Platform registered user or as an eTwinner in case you are a teacher or, uh, yeah, or working in a school. In case of a registered user, uh, you will have notifications, dashboard, groups, profile and logout, while for eTwinner you will have something, uh, something more. So yeah, notification, as you can see, is in both menu. Uh, notifications shows what is happening for you, and it gives you uh, the actions that you can uh, perform there, like if you have a request from a user that wants to get in uh, contact with you, or if you've been added to a new uh, school or new organization, if your membership has been accepted. Then you have the dashboard where you have Everything you have done in the in the platform at the moment, you only have the postings there, but you will have also all your portfolios, all your uh, professional development activities. Everything will be in your dashboard. Then you have your groups. As you can see, groups are also available for uh, registered users. This is because in order to uh, access a group, you need to be register to the platform. So um, uh, also registered users can access groups. 
your profile is there as well. And then, of course, the, the logout. Uh, you also have the option to change the language of the platform. Uh, at the moment, it's in English, but you can choose the language you, you want. And also, only for it winners, you have twin spaces and the mail. The mail is only for it winners in case of uh, registered users to the platform, they can use a sort of facilitated email. So you will receive an email in your mailbox with the content uh, written by the other uh, person, only if you want to be contacted. But this is something I will show you very soon. Um, how the mailbox looks like. It's a simple, normal mailbox. You have the inbox and the sent messages, the list of emails that you received, we highlighted the ones that needs to be read. And then if you click on new message, you can simply create a new message, uh, put the recipients, the CC subject and the message you want to write. So very easy to use as every mailbox. About your profile. OK, everything related to your activities um, is related to your profile. So in your profile, you have the main information. So what type of account you have, so if you are a teacher, if you are a company staff, if you are a training validated, the name, what is your default organization, and then the list of organization that you have linked to your profile. Then you have the about with further information and the projects in case you are a tweeners. If you click on edit your profile, you will end up in a screen. Now it was not fitting here. It's a very long screen. Uh, but from here, you can edit uh, all the information related to your profile. So the account information comes from your EU login, which means that if you want to change your uh, login credentials, you need to click on the link and go to the EU login um, platform in order to change them. Then you have the about you, where you can fill in the education type, subjects or vocational subject, the country of work, the profile picture, the description, the language, the topic you are interested in. This is important because as soon as the home page will be improved and we will have also further content, then you will see the content related to your interest highlighted first. So this is very important. Then you need to set your time zone. Register to the newsletter if you want to receive it please remember to do it because by default it's not enabled. So if you want to be kept updated of what is happening on European School Education Platform and it winning, you need to uh, apply for them. And then you can also choose the language of the newsletter that you want to receive. Uh, the email address you want to use for notifications. And then if you have a website, a Facebook profile or some social media uh, profiles. Then another important thing for you is the profile visibility, because this will allow you to choose who can view your profile and you can choose between user register on the platform, only it winners in case of it winners or no one, which I mean, if you want to be in the platform, maybe it's better if someone can can find you. Um, then you also have who can comment on your posts. Posts are not there yet, but they will be at one point. So check this one and also who can contact you. So if you want to be contacted by anyone on the platform or only from it winners, this is something really, really important. Also, what is important is the join it winning because here you can choose if you want to be available for a winning project or not. We are receiving many, many questions of why I cannot find my partner in the um, partner finding list or why I cannot add this person as a co-founder in a project. Well, it's just because they haven't enabled this option. So please go to your profile and check that this option is already enabled. And then, of course, you have the option to deactivate your profile in case you don't want to be searched uh, anymore or you want to be hidden from the from the world platform. Uh, then how to add an organization. So this is another important step. 
you can click on add an organization and then you can fill in all the information related to the subject or the ages taught in case of a school and then you can start searching for the organization by choosing the country so you choose the country you click on search and then you will have a input text field when you can start typing the name of your school and then you will see the list appearing just below. If your school is not there, but please check before that your school is there, maybe with another name because this could also happen. But in case no one has registered it before, then you can register a new school or organization. Then you need to choose also the role in the organization and then submit and the organization is added to your profile. Yeah, this is an example. I was trying to find central support service. I have to uh, go in the organization page and check which one is the correct one. Now you have the ID number that can help you to find which is the, the best one. Any question about this? Marta? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jessica, for showing this first part. We have one question about the registration, actually. Uh, and some tweeners are now uh, European School Education Platform registered and are shown as no tweener on the new platform. Uh, will this issue be solved? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? She registered to the platform. Yes, but it, it says that it's a known tweener mm -hmm. on the new platform, and this is an issue because uh, it should be. Um, OK, only people who choose to be teacher when they register on the platform can apply for being a tweener. And in order to be a tweener, when they add the organization, they need to choose, I want to join a tweening. Is OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I think we can we can move on with the second part. Thank you, Jessica. OK, so a user is registered. Um, they have to be a tweener. They've been validated by the NSO because that's another important step. Uh, once you join a tweening, you need to wait to the N for the NSO to be validated. And then once you're validated, you can access the e tweening area. The e-twinning area, um, you can see from the e-twinning area the, the local news, which are the news published by your NSO. Uh, and then you can also see the groups, my project and support. So groups, if you click on groups, you will see the list of the groups created on the platform by other e-twinners. And then if the group is open, you can join and visit the group. Um, otherwise, you will find some basic information and, and check if something is important for you or not. Uh, my project is the place where you can see all your projects that you have done on the platform. Uh, the projects can be active, which means they are open and you can work on them. They are pending in case you are waiting for your co-founder approval or the approval from the NSO. And they are closed in case you finish uh, the project and then you decided to close it, or in case the end of the year uh, it has been closed. So uh, the project is, is uh, closed and you cannot work on it anymore. Um, so if you click on the project, uh, you end up in the project information page where you have the about that shows all the information. You have the members, the image gallery, and as you can see on the right, you have the like because you can like a project if you really like it. Or you have the options to go to the twin space, edit the project in case you are the founder or the co-founder of the project or close the project. What is really important here is that from the members tag, you can invite member. Inviting a member from here means that you want an additional member in your project. So the person invited from here will become member of the project and member of the twin space. Questions about this section? 
Yes, Jessica, we have one question. Uh, will all the materials and other contents of the old twin spaces migrate to this new platform? Yes, uh, well, sorry, the twin spaces. Yes, uh, yes. they will be, uh, but we set up a cutoff date. So please check the Q&A section on the um, school education platform. Um, European School Education Platform, so you can see what is the cutoff date because projects, well, materials and free spaces older than 2007, 2018, if I'm not mistaken, won't be migrated while uh, the, the other ones will be on the new platform. As you can imagine, it's a very big amount of data, so it requires time to be migrated to the new platform, but don't worry, everything will be there. Thank you very much. We can continue. So we can move on with the networking. <clears throat> OK, the networking area is the place where you can get in contact with others, uh, check what are the schools and organization and find your partners. So as you can see from the screenshot they place, uh, the schools and organization sections is the place where you can find all the schools and organization that are registered on the platform. This is really nice because you can see um, information about the schools that are, uh, that are there. Um, the partner finding is another important area, especially for e-training at the moment, but we will have the Erasmus Plus tools here as well for Erasmus Plus project. Uh, and here you can write posts. Uh, they are called e-training project ideas. And for the ones who are used to be familiar with e-training with the previous platform, uh, it, it is what was called Partner Finding Forum. So now it's uh, e twinning project ideas. You can post here. If you click on Add Posting, then you can just um, add an e twinning project idea and fill in all the information related to the to the posting, uh, which is the type, the organization that you are using, the title of the idea you have, the summary, and all the information in order to. Um, ask people if they could be interested in joining your project and then really finding someone interested in starting a new project with you all. Um, once it's done, um, you will see all the information and then you have the options of uh, click on I found my partner in case you found the partner before the expiration date. Uh, or in case uh, someone is interested in, uh, in your project, they can write a comment below it and then you can start getting in touch with each other. Once you find the person you're interested to get in touch with, you can just go to the people section of the of the platform and then fill in the name or use the uh, advanced filters and then you will see the, the people showing uh, right uh, right there. And if you click on the name of the person you want to get in contact, then you can you can choose to uh, you can visit the profile, and from them you from there you can see the schools that are linked to this person profile, uh, where this person is located, if it's an e-twinner, if it's a teacher or or have another role in the school like headmaster or consultant or uh, whatever role. Uh, and then you can choose to add this person as a contact or to get in contact with this person. Uh, and then on the networking, the last part is related to projects. So from here you can see all the projects registered on the platform. And you can also start a new project from here. So if you click a new project, create a project, then you uh, will end up in a in a screen where you will need to fill in the information related to the school you want to select because maybe you have more than one school related uh, linked to your profile. Uh, then you select the part the partner as a co-founder. Please note, as I said before, in order for the person to show up in the list here, this person needs to be one of your contact, and they need to have enabled available for a twinning project. So do not forget that. And then uh, just fill in all the information uh, about the project. So the title, the description, the key competencies, subject, and all the information. 
uh, the work process, the thumbnail, the results. Uh, you can check it with the review. And then once you click on create, you will send a request to your co-founder to approve uh, to be your project partner, co-founder. And once this person has approved, then the request will go to the NSO or to the both the NSOs, because in case uh, the project is a European project, then you need to, it needs to be validated by both the NSOs. Please remember, a project that starts national will be national, even though you add European members afterwards. So it's very, very important that if you want to apply for national quality labels, you need to have a European project since the beginning. And once the NSO has approved the project, then the twin space is automatically created. Questions about the projects? Yes, Jessica, we had one question in the chat about the certificates for the project actually. And the question mm -hmm. is, can we download the certificate uh, showing we are part of a current project like we used to? Uh, unfortunately, not yet, but this feature will be available on the platform. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then we have the twin space. Twin space actually is the place where the project happens. And as I said before, uh, if you go in your pro in your menu, in your user menu, you will see my twin spaces. And if you have only one twin space, then once click on my twin space, you will go directly to your twin space. Otherwise, if you have more than one, you will end up in this page where you can see your active twin spaces, the archived one and the closed one. The closed one are the one related to project which are already closed and they are in view only mode. Uh, for the active ones, you can choose to edit the information of the twin space open the twist space or archive it in case you want to uh, put it on hold, but you don't want to close the project. So if you open the twin space, um, you will see the structure is more or less the same as before, but with a very different look and feel. So you will have the overview um, with the teacher bulletin there. Um, you will have all the updates and then the quick links to open the chat room, to create online meeting and to create discussions in the forum. Uh, the pages are, are working as before. So if you click on create a page, then you can put the title of the page in case you already have a um, uh, top level page, you can choose to create a second level page. So if you have a parent page, you can create a second level page. Uh, and then in the page content, you can choose to put the text content or the poll. Uh, please note that the twin board will be available next year. Uh, at the moment it's not there, but it will be available. Don't worry. And then from here, you can also check the visibility of the page. You can change it and put it visible only uh, for you and for administrators, for everyone on the internet, so to make it public or only for TwinSpace members. Uh, you can also check for the permissions, so who can edit the page, so if only administrators and teachers or also pupils and, and visitors. Also, you can choose about discussion. So as before, uh, if you want, you can also create a forum uh, discussion linked to the uh, to the page or you can also check uh, the version history. So if someone make, makes changes to a page that you had created, you can go back and see what was changed before. Then we have the materials and it works exactly as before. So you can upload images, videos and files. And if you do it from here, you can, uh, from the materials section, you can move things into folders and organize uh, the content. Otherwise, if you're doing it directly from the, I don't know, the page or the updates, then they go immediately in the materials folder themselves. Uh, then you have the forum. Uh, the forum where you can open discussions 
and inside each discussion you can open threads so to organize uh, your discussion as much as you want. Online meetings are already there and they are already working and if you click on uh, meetings you can see all the past meetings and the upcoming ones and you can create new online meetings. Otherwise with the chat room you can just open the chat room and start chatting with all the people inside the, um, the twin space. Then we have the, the members. This is a quite important section uh, because it has a bit different since before. So first of all, uh, if you want to invite other users, that's one of the big news. If you invite someone who is um, one of your contacts and it's available for a twinning project, at the moment when you invite this member, you can choose to invite this person only to the twin space or also to the project. So you can invite on, uh, you can choose where do you want this person to collaborate with you. For pupils, you can choose to add new pupils, add existing pupils or import pupils. In case you add new pupils, uh, you can just fill in the first name, last name, and then uh, the password. The username is automatically generated by the platform, and then you can choose the role. If you click on Add Pupil, then uh, you can add pupils to the twin space. Uh, when you get the success um, warning, you can download the passwords card. Passwords cards are, are, are under improvement at, at the moment because we want to put there also the link for pupils to be connected to the twin space. And one important information is that the pupils login is the link that you can see here. So it's school-education.ec.europa.eu slash English or your language slash pupil dash login. But Anyway, it will be soon available in all the password cards that you can download from here. Uh, then the main thing is what are the differences between the twin spaces and groups? As you know, they have uh, the same logic behind. Uh, they are working exactly the same way, but the twin space is the place where the project um, work is done. Uh, they can work the project members there and the teacher and students. While the group is something, oh, here I have something weird in my slide. Okay, there's some thing, weird thing. Uh, E-twinning groups uh, are virtual places where you can meet e-twinners with the same interests. So it's more related to topics and to um, yeah, specific, uh, specific topics. Um, the twin space is automatically created when the project is approved, while the groups are created by tweeners and they can be, um, at the moment they are automatically approved, but very soon they will be again, uh, they will require again the approval from the CSS as it used to be in the previous platform. Uh, on twin space, you can have access from pupils, while in groups you don't have it, uh, it's not possible to have pupils in groups and the twin space has two different type of roles, administrators and members, while groups have administrator, expert, members and moderators. So these are the main differences. Uh, before going into the questions, uh, I would like to remind you that for any support related to e-twinning and the e-twinning features, on the platform, you need to contact your NSO. If you want to find your the contact details for your NSO, you just uh, you can visit the about page on the um, European School Education platform, and there is a section eTwinning and NSO. While if for any inquiries related to European School Education platform for, for any technical reason, you can just go to azap-support.eu and there uh, we will take care of your uh, issues and, and problems. Marta, do we have questions before I move on with what's going on? Uh, yes, Jessica, we, we had one question about the mailbox and the students. Can the register students use the mailbox uh, of the platform? Uh, no, 
uh, that the mailbox is only for uh, eTwinners registered on the platform. Pupils is something different because pupils, uh, they don't have a U login, therefore they have a sort of special status on the on the work platform. Thank you for answering. We can move on. OK, so um, what is coming next? OK, so uh, by the end of 2022, uh, you're going to be able to apply for the e-training school label. This is going to come very soon, as well as to uh, for projects to be nominated for the European quality label. And we will have the e-training prizes application. Uh, during the course of 2023, well, there's going to be many things happening, uh, but first of all, we will start identifying the needs together with the NSO, the end users and the other stakeholders. And everything will be um, checked in the, in the following areas. That is the platform usability. So we want to make the platform, uh, we want to improve the platform and make it as easier to be used as possible. Uh, the Erasmus Plus tools, which at the moment are not there, uh, and also the uh, features for the e-training community, which at the moment um, there are a lot of things missing. So this is going to happen in uh, 2023. I think I'm done. So I'm. Yes, giving... thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much, Jessica, for showing us all the all the features available currently on the platform. Uh, we will surely have some more time for the questions uh, at the end of the session. But now I would like to give the floor to Benjamin Hertz, who will introduce profession the professional development on the European School Education Platform. So Ben, welcome. The, the floor is yours. Many thanks, Marta. Uh, thanks, Jessica, for that introduction. Oh, and I see you're running through the slides there, Jessica. So if you could move. Yes. OK, so um, I'll be briefly talking about um, the professional development areas of the European School Education Platform, um, the course and webinar catalog, how to enroll and access a course. Uh, and then I'll look at the EU Academy platform, which is um, where actually all the courses from the European School Education Platform are hosted. I'll explain more about that in a moment. And very briefly at the end, also uh, talk about how um, you can find support on the courses or webinars specifically. Um, next slide, please. So um, first point is that uh, when we talk about professional development on the European School Education Platform, we need to talk about two platforms because uh, we have uh, on the European School Education Platform itself, we have uh, the course catalogue um, and the webinar catalogue. So this is the place where you can find information about uh, the professional development offer that we have available. Um, but when you then participate in that professional development, you actually go to a different platform called the EU Academy Platform. And this is um, a learning management system based on Moodle. Many of you probably know Moodle, um, which the European Commission uses to host um, all the courses um, and webinars, etc., cetera, um, that are being offered by different European Commission services. And this is also the platform that we're using to host our courses. And I'll show more how the two interact uh, in a moment. Can you, next slide, please. So first point of call is if you go to um, the home page, um, you will see at the top um, in the navigation bar um, uh, a place where you can click on development. And there is uh, another category called professional development. When you click on that, you get to this page here um, where you see an overview of the courses and webinars that are currently being uh, offered. Now, at the moment, you will not see so many courses and webinars there. Currently, there are only three showing up here. Um, this, however, should change in the upcoming months, so the number should increase for sure. Um, for now, um, you will only see their courses and webinars that are being offered directly by the European School Education Platform. Um, there was a question in the chat about when uh, it will be possible again for uh, other course providers, external course providers to um, add courses here into the catalogue, uh, and we expect this to, to come in 2023 at some point. So that remains not possible for now. Now, um, <clears throat> you can, um, when you then click on uh, one of the courses, uh, let's take this upcoming course uh, on eTwinning projects and TwinSpace, uh, launching on uh, the 14th, launching on Monday. 
Um, you can then find information about the course, um, about the learning objectives, description, um, the methodology, um, the launch date, the end date, etc. Um, and you can also um, directly access the course from this page. Now, um, the blue button that you can see here that is highlighted, um, this depends on um, if you are already enrolled to the course or not. Um, in this example, um, I am already enrolled on this course. So um, when I click on that button, the course directly opens for me on the U Academy. If you're not enrolled, this button will show enroll. Then um, and then you can click on the button and uh, you are automatically enrolled on the course. However, please note that some of our courses are restricted to specific audiences. Uh, in this course, it's uh, actually only for e-turners. So if you are not an e-turner, then you will not be able to access this course and the enroll button will be grayed out. So you will not be able to uh, enroll to this course. Um, <clears throat> and in the future, we might have these type of restrictions also for other audiences, depending on um, the need there. Um, next slide, thanks. So yeah, this just shows another section of that course page. Um, highlighted here at the bottom, you can see information about the learning hours, the target audience, um, as well as the upcoming sessions. Sometimes courses are offered in multiple sessions, um, so multiple times throughout the year, uh, and this is indicated here under the upcoming sessions part. Now, if we click on the open course button, then we move to this different platform, the EU Academy. So you can see here the interface looks quite different. Uh, the colors are quite different. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, now we are in directly inside the course. And here on this um, slide, you can see the course interface, the main course interface. So uh, you can see the different modules um, and where and how to access the content. You can see links for the course announcements and the course forum here. Um, when you browse through this, this will all be, um, I think, quite clear and easily nav navigatable for you. Um, but let's just um, take a look briefly at uh, some of these areas in more detail. So if you click on one of the module headings, you will then see the course content popping up for you. Next slide. So which uh, looks a bit like this. So you can see an introduction to the module or how this course works section. And when you scroll down further that page, you will then see individual module sections. Uh, next slide. Um, which is marked here in the red box. And when you click on these um, uh, individual module sections, that's where you get to the actual course content and activities um, and where you can then navigate through the different content and activities that the course provides. Um, which you can see on the next slide. And that looks like this here. And you can navigate backwards and forwards here through that content, through the bottom, uh, through the buttons at the bottom there. Um, I hope that's given you sort of a sense of um, the interaction between the European School Education Platform and the course interface. Um, most of our courses are highly interactive and require you to um, interact with your peers. So we also make use of lots of external tools such as uh, Padlets and Trisiders, etc. So you will see these either linked on those pages that I just that I just showed you, or embedded on those pages, so you can interact with your course peers there. Um, I want to say just very briefly a few more words about um, the EU Academy because at the moment um, on the European School Education Platform, when you go to your own profile, your own dashboard, you will actually not see any information about the courses. So you will not see any certificates that you've been awarded there uh, and you will not see the courses that you have enrolled in. Um, so in the meantime, while this is not available on the European School Education Platform, you can access all of this directly on the EU Academy. So by clicking on your name um, at the top right, uh, you can see this uh, menu popping up where you can find, um, for example, a dashboard um, and a profile link. If you click on the dashboard link there, you get an overview of all the courses that you have enrolled in. Can you move to the next slide? Thanks. So that looks like this then here. So you can see here also courses that are not from the European School Education Platform. Um, if you have signed up for courses um, on the EU Academy from different providers, um, but here you have a nice overview of all the courses, uh, upcoming events, um, your files, um, announcements and achievements, etc. Also, also, also summarized here. Uh, and the same thing goes for the profile. Um, if you go to uh, the profile page, there you will be able to access, for example, your certificates that have been awarded um, through all the courses. 
Later on, um, this information should all be available on the um, profile and dashboard of the European School Education Platform. For now, this is the only place where you will be able to access them. And you can move to the next slide. Yeah, this is the uh, profile page where you can uh, see here how to edit it and you have different um, areas of the profile, such as the My Certificate, which is probably the most important and relevant area for you. And then um, a quick final word. Um, now, as I mentioned, on the course catalogue and webinar catalogue um, on the um, school education platform itself, there's currently not so much, not so many courses webinars there. We have, however, a lot more courses on offer. So um, you can find all of those courses, uh, also old courses, which still are accessible for browsing. So you can still enroll in them and browse through the content. And you can find those directly through the EU Academy interface. Uh, there's a search box here and you can also search by category. So if you go to the education category, you will see um, all of our courses, but also courses from other uh, European Commission services. So um, just be aware of that. And then if you are stuck with something, um, uh, then there are really two different places to go for help in regards to the professional development offer. Um, if you have technical issues linked to the EU Academy, then go to the help desk of the EU Academy, uh, which you can see here on the slide, and they have a dedicated email address as well, which you can also find on that help desk. It's eu slash academy slash support at ec or your .eu. Um, But if you have issues regarding the course organization, um, information that's on your certificates, uh, questions about um, the timing of the courses, these type of things, then please direct these questions to the School Education Platform help desk, so which you can see on the next slide. And on the uh, and there you can see um, uh, in the inquiry form when you when you contact uh, the help desk there, you can identify that your inquiry is regarding the uh, courses on offer or the webinars on offer. So please make sure to mark that accordingly so that it is directed to the um, correct. Uh, colleagues at our end. That's it from my side. Um, I hope that's given you a sense of uh, what the professional development offers uh, and will hopefully soon offer on the school education platform. Back to you, Marta. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben, for also giving us an introduction and an overview of the professional development on the new platform. Uh, as the slide is clearly stating, we will have some time now for some questions and answer together with our speakers. Uh, so please continue to post uh, your question in the chat. Uh, I see already uh, one for Jessica maybe about actually the, the new speed on, on eTwinning uh, Live. Because or on the old platform, indeed, on eTwinning Live, uh, there were places where you could post updates about what happened um, around, uh, connected to the, all the uh, eTwinning related stuff. And is there anything similar in the new platform? Uh, will it be available anytime soon? Yeah, as I said, this in this is in the plan of 2023. So he's going to be there. He's going to be the feeds, the comments, the likes as we used to have in eTwinning Live before, but it requires some time because we want to make it usable as well. So um, it's going to happen next year. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we had one question in the chat, Marcus. I think this is uh, for you. Can private organizations join it winning or just public school bodies like uh, on your platform? Yes, uh, I answered in the chat already that it winning is a safe and secure space for school staff and their students, but as an so to say external user, you can be invited to individual projects by the founders of that project. OK, thank you very much, Marcus, for answering. And Ben already addressed actually some of the questions related to the uh, professional development. Um, I'm looking also at the Padlet we posted on the page of the webinar. Uh, I read already some 
of the question and checking now to see if there are any other generic questions that can be addressed during the session. Uh, maybe we can take this one. Uh, if your school, you as a member, were a national or European prize, it will be on, on our profile. Maybe this is for you, Jessica. Yeah, uh, yes, of course. All the badges will be on the profiles as used to be before, as well as the eTwinning school labels will be on the eTwinning schools profile. So you will have this information available as used to be before. And actually, uh, the um, prizes badge as well as the support badge are already there. So you can already find them in the profile, user's profile. OK, thank you very much. We have another one uh, about the project and the partners. What about my partners? How I can uh, I get them into the project? Uh, they are among the personal contacts, but um, unfortunately I cannot invite them when I enter the project. Their profiles don't, do not appear. Yeah, I think this is the issue I was telling before uh, about the uh, enabling available for a training project. So please check with your contacts that they have enabled available for a training project. And in case they keep on having this issue, then I think they need to uh, create a ticket because we need to investigate what is going wrong on the platform. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. And one about the quality labels. Um, when will the European quality labels for the projects of last school year will be awarded? Uh, the European quality label nomination will open by the end of the year. So next year uh, you will see the uh, the awarding of the European quality labels. OK, thank you very much. Um, Another question, where can we download the password cards if we didn't do uh, the first time? Uh, unfortunately, uh, for privacy issue for pupils, this is available only at the moment when you um, uh, when you create, when you invite pupils to the to the tree space. If you didn't do it, <clears throat> sorry, the first time, then um, you can either change the password if they are not able to log in anymore or you can delete the accounts and recreate the pupils account again and then download the password cards okay thank you thank you very much uh, about the teacher bulletin what exactly is the purpose of teacher bulletin um, that of the project diary or a reminder of the main events of the partners uh, this is exactly as in legacy, so it is more a project diary for teachers to uh, be always updated on what is coming and what is happening in the in the project to be always updated. So there are no changes with with leg with legacy with the previous um, tweet spaces that were available. OK, thank you very much and. As we are moving moving towards the end of the session, I would like to remind the participants to also save the link of the survey we have just posted in the chat and you can complete it later, but please save the link now. Um, we can maybe take a few more questions. Uh, one is we need a full and comprehensive search function for projects. Uh, there are thousands and we need detailed filters dedicated to the search, search function. Will it be improved? Maybe this one is for uh, Marcus. We try to, to, to improve the search algorithm, of course, and the ranking of the results. And at the same time, we receive from many sites the request for more sophisticated filters. We are working on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcus, for, for addressing this. Um, and one more question about the progress bar. Uh, when will be visible the progress bar for the eight winners? Uh, we are working on this and also we are revising the wall um, 
the whole data that used to be there because before uh, part of the uh, well, the, the, um, the points were coming from different activities done by the eTwinners on the platform. And as you can imagine, the platform has changed a lot. So we really need to revise the world counting and the world system in order for you to be more uh, realistic, the, the number that you see in the profiles. So this is under, um, we are really studying it hard to see how to improve it a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica. So uh, actually we are running out of time and the session has been quite intense and rich and full of updates. So I would like really to thank all the participants who, who joined this session. We hope you uh, found some answers and uh, as we told you, everything is in progress. Uh, the platform will have more functionalities in uh, 2023. So please be patient and uh, everything will be uh, fully working uh, soon. I would like, of course, to thank you all our speakers today, uh, Jessica, Benjamin and uh, Marcus. Thank you very much for uh, giving the presentation, uh, explain all the futures, giving all the updates, but also for addressing uh, the questions both in the chat and also the one that I read to you directly here. I would like to wish you all a good evening and stay safe. Bye everyone, thank you for joining.